So put in notes or questions. This is not a formal presentation. That is, I haven't really prepared for it. I just decided that I would do it and um, explain things. So everybody's aware of the you that Trump administration failed to nominate someone to be elect to represent the United States to be elected to the Committee on Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. So I want to put that in context because people sort of think Trump is out there, but actually Trump is right in the line with uh, what every administration has done. He just takes it. Like everything he does, he takes it to the extreme, but it's not inconsistent with other administrations' behavior. So to put this in context, I need to start with the idea that the treaty, Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, was signed approximately about uh, 1966 in terms of when the world put the treaty in force, okay? Elimination of all forms of racial discrimination. The U.S. signed the treaty, but that has no effect. So saying that the U.S. signed the treaty in 1966 is sort of meaningless. The question is, is when did they ratify the treaty? Because the treaty has no effect until it's ratified and ratified in a certain way. When did that happen? 1995. So for 30 years, through all of those administrations, no administration ratified, uh, Democrat or Republican ratified the treaty to eliminate all forms of racial discrimination. Okay. Under Clinton, the treaty got ratified, but it got ratified in a very restrictive way. The, same, the United States consistently puts itself forth as being a defender of human rights and, and, and in that context, telling people that, uh, yes, we've signed all these treaties or we've ratified the treaties, but what, people, what they don't tell people is even when they ratify a treaty, they do it in a way that gives American citizens no rights. So the treaty was ratified, but it was ratified with clauses that said, hey, yeah, this treaty has a lot of rights in it, but you American, don't have any more rights than the Constitution provides. The Constitution is the highest level of the highest document of the land, and it governs what rights you have. People will think, well, that makes sense since we're a constitutional monarch. I mean, not monarch, a constitutional government. But the problem with is our Constitution has no human rights in it, none. Very few. There's a few civil rights, but we have no substantive human rights. All the rights we have are procedural rights. So we have we have a right to a hearing before they can take our life our, and our property and our pursuit of happiness. But you don't actually have a right to life uh, uh, and to your property. The government, with an appropriate hearing, can take it. So we have procedural rights, we have no substantive rights under the Constitution. We don't have a right to education, we don't have a right to housing, we don't have a right to clothing, we don't have a right to food, we don't right have a right to health care. We have no substantive rights under our Constitution. So when the United States says that even though they've signed these treaties that recognizes all of these human rights, they're basically saying, no, we don't recognize anything our Constitution has doesn't have in it, and our Constitution doesn't have any of this. In addition, the United States, uh, most of these treaties provide individuals with a right to file a complaint against their government if the government is violating the treaty, 
almost every human rights treaty has that in it. I, as an individual, can file a complaint against my government if, uh, but the government has to agree to allow you to file the complaint. And guess what the United States did? They specifically excluded the ability of an American citizen to file a complaint against the United States as, as a whole, saying that they would do it on a case-by-case -case basis, which meant that they have never done it. They have never allowed an American citizen to complain about human rights violation in international courts. Republican administration, Democrat, because the Democrats could have changed that. When they were in power, they could make a change to the treaty, the change in interpretation of the treaty. They don't because they like it the way it is. And they get to play like the good guy. So Clinton, the World Conference Against Racism is coming up in 2000. The planning is getting started. And it becomes an embarrassment for Clinton that everybody's going to be talking about the World Conference Against Racism. And the United States hasn't ratified the treaty. And so that the treaty got ratified with all of the problems that I have identified. The treaty requires, you, requires the government to do a report every two to three years. Don't hold me to this because I'm having a senior moment and I don't remember the exact number of years, but it's frequent, okay? The United States missed the first two reports. Clinton didn't do them. Uh, yeah, well, we do in the treaty, but we ain't going to abide by it. So, so coming up on 2001, the Clinton, the, the, they, they did a report and they had the hearings and whatever they have in the United Nations has. So the World Conference Against Racism is coming up in Durban, so, uh, South Africa. And America is deciding they ain't going to participate. Their reason for not participating is they don't like how Israel is being treated. So I, I'm kind of like, wait, whoa, wait a minute. We're, we're talking about racism in this country, and you're not going to participate in the World Conference Against Racism because you don't like the language that may come, that may come out of it based about Israel, okay? So the United States really didn't participate in the World Conference Against Racism uh, and, and no administration sent a delegation. Uh, Bush uh, 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 came in right at the start of this and in 2000, he did, and they didn't, he didn't do anything different, okay? So, during the Republic administrations, uh, they saw that they, the, one of the things the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination did was submit set a uh, committee. And the committee has no power. It's just a research committee. It researches and put out reports, okay? And it does it for the world, I mean, and the United States kept a member on the committee. So this is the step further that Trump has done, okay? Because the United States has refused to take any of the steps recommended by human rights people. One of the uh, responsibilities under the Convention on the Eliminate All Forms of Racial Discrimination is that you establish a human rights network to educate your citizens about what human rights are and how to address them. Do you know of anyone that's doing that? Is there a national government, government organization that is dedicated to the education around human rights? No, and every administration has refused. And that was the specific ask that we, that we, and I say we because I was heavily involved in the international human rights thing at the time, 
that we ask of the Obama administration. And we asked them to do something really quite small. And that was to change the name of the Office of Civil Rights to the Office of Civil Rights and Human Rights. And guess what the Democrats did? They said no. Because nobody wants Americans to have to look at ourselves in, 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 uh, through a human rights lens. They don't want to educate American citizens on what human rights are and how they have no human rights under the law and how they restrict people access to uh, the government, to the, to, uh, to the international thing, uh, uh, conference. Gail McDougal, McDougal is a, quite an astonishing Black woman who has just an amazing international law, background, history, advocacy, was appointed to the committee by Obama. And I think that's the primary reason that Trump's probably not appointing her. They, they just, they don't care enough to appoint someone. It's anti what they're, what they're for. And, uh, and they would get picked on if they appointed someone who did not understand international human rights. Because one of the things that uh, that committee has consistently done is that at least the people who have been appointed to serve on the committee has an understanding of human rights and has an understanding of racism and the Convention on Elimination all form of racial discrimination. So Trump, refusal is big. It's a big step. Now, remember that it's not an appointment directly to the committee. It's an appointment to be elected to the committee. And no one, uh, no, um, there, no American, there's always been an American representation on the committee. And the community is huge, 15 people, which tells you right away, it's not a com committee designed to do anything. Once you get past three people, you're really talking about just juggling personalities and interests and moving towards the middle. But it did. They do do some. They listen carefully, and they have done some good work in terms of studying and researching and put out and reports. But like I said earlier, the problem is that the United States has restricted the uh all human rights treaties, not just the elimination of forms of racial discrimination. It, it takes them forever to sign. I'm, I think they may have fi finally found the, uh, signed the treaty on the protection of the child, but I'm not sure. Um, it, and that's been around for decades. Uh, at any rate, I want to stop and see if people have some questions that I can answer because I didn't want to go too long on this. I just wanted to clear up that what Trump is doing is a step further than everyone else, but it's consistent with everyone else. He's just more overt and outrageous in his behavior. Yeah, I, Zaki, I think the Democrats are useless. And I think until we bite the bullets and say we ain't voting for Democrats anymore, even if it means Trump gets reelected, even if it means that someone we don't want gets reelected, we have to at some point decide that we can never get satisfaction for the Democrats because they run, they, they primary in the center and left, making you think that they're gonna do something. And then they run their elections in the middle and they govern from the middle. And if you want something progressive, they're never going to do it. And voting for them maintains a two party system and we'll never get out of this trap until we get another party at least one of the probably party, probably three or four. We need a couple of parties on each side. We need a parliament for our sort of government where people, uh, where, where people can go and vote and have no confidence vote that the president is picked by the party instead of, and that the party, you have no confidence votes on the party 
and and the pre and that they have to form coalitions because they have three or four uh, parties. They have to form coalitions with other government parties in order to run. And those other parties hold them to hold them uh, accountable for what they said they're going to do. Right now, we have no way to hold people accountable. I get so mad when people say, hold them accountable. Yeah, how? How do exactly do we do that when all we get to vote for is a Democrat or a Republican? Okay, I'm ranting. Any questions? Any comments? Uh, Zakar, I didn't quite understand no, I wasn't reading, so I don't know what your comment. No, not the government. There are nonprofits that do. I don't know what that was to. Zaki, I mean, I said Zakar. Zaki, I'm sorry. I put your first, the first few letters of your first name and your last name together. Okay, I guess there's no more comments or anything. Thanks for taking your valuable time listening to me. If you have any questions after you thought about the um, uh, thing, you know what? I think we really need to get, um, um, we need to get a commitment. Every, we need to get a commitment to do human rights right from these uh, candidates, any candidates. And that would mean um, not just ratifying it. I missed an important part of what it takes to make human rights law in this country. The way the United States signs human rights treaty, they ordinarily treaties are law immediately upon ratification. They're the law of the land immediately upon ratification and the only they're they're above the law for everything but the constitution okay so for non-human rights treaties the senate just needs to ratify it but what the government has done is adopted the view that human rights should not even though they ratify a treaty is ratification for the purpose of reporting and stuff like that. But if we, you don't get any new rights under a ratified treaty unless a law has been passed giving you new rights. And guess what? No law has been passed on the elimination of all forms of racial discrimination. So to me, that's the big thing that could happen is, is that if we got, if we pass the, Convention on if we if the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination was ratified, I mean not ratified, it's already ratified. If it was adopted into law, that would be a huge step for helping our people be effective to, to eliminate racism. But of course, neither Democrats nor Republicans are interested in that. They absolutely refuse to do it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop because I said I was gonna keep this short. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.